Thank you for taking the time today to help us document some of your harvest history. Um, go ahead and introduce yourselves and then tell us where you're from. Okay. My wife, <laughs> Carlene, <yourself. laughs> and Janelle, my daughter, I'm the Vern Scamper and I'm doing that. You guys are from? Older, Nebraska. Um, how, how many years have you guys been? Well, my dad started out in 59. Okay. And then I joined in later in about 64. And uh, Gleaner A. Okay. That's, that's a big machine back then. I thought then it went to C2s, but. And uh, that's where I'm at, I guess. How did you decide to get started? Was it just kind of something you always wanted? Thought well, you'd do? I'd love to run the combine, I guess. Yeah. yeah. The thrill of it. And then you went to Nebraska? Yeah. And then you married into it? And I'm, we married the fall of 73, so yep. I was in on the fall of 73 at uh, running. He had a G combined, and he went to an L right away at that time, and then branched to two L's before a couple, three years was up. <laughs> so we were moving along, and the price of cutting wheat back then was... Well, my dad was going to his $3 an acre, uh, nickel over 20, nickel for the truck, and, you know, you cut 100 acres in a little small combine, it takes a little while. Yeah. Nowadays, it's, they're huge and don't take long to do 100 acres. When yeah. I married in, we were first coming in with uh, campers. I don't think they had campers too long before that, so it was kind of a rough story before that. Well, in the old days, they all slept in trucks and grimmers, yeah. took baths in the water tank. <laughs> <laughs> I went along with Dad going north. That's what we did down south too. Use the water tank or slap in the back of the truck or somewhere people did. And we got up there in Lemon, South Coast and took shower baths in the river. Okay. Yeah, we slapped in a little camper on a pickup. That's how that worked. I was young, <laughs> starting out. I was helping dad then. Uh-huh. It was interesting. Time changed a lot. A since lot. Then. Yeah, everything got big. Bigger trucks. Yeah. Where did you guys eat before um, wives came along? Yeah. Where we eat? Yeah, where'd you guys eat? Oh, dad fixed a sandwich. Go to the cafe most of the time. Grab a hamburger at noon. Uh huh. Yeah. Eat when you came in? Well, no, we had a cafe maybe. Yeah. Yeah, they had cafes out there. You bet. Interesting. And then uh, you just took your family along right from the beginning, right? When I got married, I already went to 73. In 73, before 74 had started, well, we stayed in a crew trailer when we were first married that okay. first fall. With which, the crew? No. no. The crew oh, okay. Was, <laughs> the crew was out. Oh, wow. <laughs> I, no. <laughs> and that, that year, over the winter, um, Laverne had bought uh, a Ford Louisville tandem. and. He bought a new pickup that March, and we bought a new camper that year. Sunflower. As, yeah, it was a Sunflower brand. Uh -huh. And what was it we decided we, we spent for those three? Well, it wasn't that much, but it seemed like a lot when we were young starting out. Well, I think the camper was around 4200 somewhere in that range, and the pickup yeah. was approximately the same. And then the Ford Louisville truck you bought at that time was? I don't know, 15000 12000 Yeah. Wish we could buy it for that today. Yeah. Got a new box in the hoist, brand new. So pickups were only, my first pickup was only 3,500. Wow. Yeah. Was Had no air conditioning. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no bells and whistles. Yeah. No bells but and whistles. But it worked, right? Yes. Yeah, it worked. Well, that's just the way it was back then. Uh huh. We had air conditioners. When they did have air they weren't that good anyway. You bet. Um, so describe kind of where your harvest season starts normally and then kind of the path you follow. Well, my dad, when he got going with a neighbor, went and started in Cordell, Oklahoma. Okay. And well, Snyder and Cordell. And yeah. Little stops like that. Now we start down there in Frederick, Oklahoma. And work our way north. Two stops in Oklahoma. Anthony, Pratt. And we go to. Sharon Springs. Where? Sharon Springs. Yeah, Sharon Springs. Jetmore. And, and well, J.C. worked at Scott, Scott City. City. Scott City. 
wasn't much here this year. Lots of rain, a lot of hail. So. Mm -hmm. From there on, you want to know it's tomorrow? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> go for it. Well, we go to the Chapel, Nebraska. Julesburg. Julesburg first, I guess, Chapel. Gurley, up north of Sydney. Then we hit South Dakota, Gettysburg area. And some of us split off, they go to Montana. Okay. We didn't take the old route yet. Jamestown sometimes, we used to have a big run there, but that all went to real crop. And that's the way it is, getting around up Gettysburg too, a lot of real crop. Then we hit Langdon. That's our last stop, and we had sometimes had to rush to get out of there, because their fall cops getting ready to hold reach Nebraska. Okay. Yeah, that's how that works. So. Do you guys have any fond memories from, I don't know, stopping at some of these places that you've gone to year over year? We have a lot of good friends. And it's friends and a lot of friends are just harvesters, you know. It's yeah. Kind of, you haven't seen them for six months or a year sometimes. Get acquainted and the farmers are always, both of them are just like family. Yeah. Especially if you worked there for a long time, you know, new ones are not. But. I think Coldwater, Kansas was one of the kids' favorites when they were little because it was a small enough town and some of the local kids were uh, friends with our kids and yeah. they could ride their bikes down to the swimming pool in the afternoon and stuff without somebody having to be in town with uh -huh. them and um, a lot of good memories in that town. For the kids that down to the swimming yeah. pool. Yeah. That's where they learn how to swim, I guess. Yep. That and Chapel, those two towns. I feel like we stuck there sometimes too long. Yeah. <laughs> the weather goes bad, you know. Uh -huh. There's the full of water. And I think what surprises Mud. a person is, um, you know, some years we were still in southern Kansas at Coldwater on the 4th of July. Yeah. And other years we can be clear almost done or done in western Nebraska by the 4th of July and on up to South Dakota. Yeah. Just depending upon that weather, it's, it's, it's crazy that where you're at at what time of year. Mm -hmm. Do you feel like the weather um, changes in the weather have, like, changed your harvest stops or routines like not it's, making it it's to never different. never two years alike okay it changes yeah yeah it does you know one we, one year we was out there sharing spring and we made it to julesburg real easy and the next time it don't work that way right so my brother had to help out on that deal it still seems like we're leaving around may 20th and we're back at home in nebraska by about september 20th and that's kind of always been the same uh huh. Uh, well, sometimes days. a little sooner you gotta go through a uh, Husker harvest days, you know. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> little break. Uh -huh. Walk around in the sun. Mm -hmm. Of course, I can't walk that far anymore. But <laughs> take a cane and <laughs> find a place to sit. Right? Am I right? Uh, how many machines do you guys run? Well, I have run up to five. Okay. My kids are really involved in growing up. And uh, I'm down to two. Okay. Just uh, my daughter runs them. Carly drives the truck. Get a couple other guys, carts, and other drivers. It works pretty good. The whole family has eight, and we do still work together. Okay. And, um, if somebody can't make one spot, and somebody else needs to go. We we bump over each other all the time at what we're doing. Mm -hmm. What do you think is like? I mean, Janelle, you could, you could cover this, but like brought your kids back, you know, and wanted to keep investing into the business. I'll let you Just answer. hired help is so hard to find, I think, so they all have somebody dependable. Uh-huh. <laughs> That's our main thing. Yeah. Getting good is. people. Is that? They get homesick. Yeah. And they got a girlfriend home. Oh. oh gee whiz. Oh, Grandpa's sick. He's in the hospital. I hear things like that all the time. Uh-huh. Your other crew does too. So. Yep. One of the biggest challenges. Yeah, it's a challenge. It's worse than the fighting the weather. Yeah. Yes, it is. The yeah. The teachers at school used to tell me that my kids were the closest four kids that they'd ever seen, and I do believe a lot of that is due to our way of life with Harvest. That in the summertime they had each other to depend upon, and mm -hmm. that's kind of where it stopped, and it carried over to life every day. They were each other's friends. Yes. Mm -hmm. I mean, kind of had to. It's all you had out on the road is just you guys, you know. Mm -hmm. You were your own community. Yeah. Besides the people you cut for. Right. Yep. You know. 
Um, I think you kind of touched on how the price has changed, the price of work has changed. Oh yeah, it, it really changed from three dollar nickel or twenty and nickel for the truck, and, and it got to three and a half one time. The truck went to seven cents maybe, over twenty and stuff. Then we got up to eight dollars, eight and eight and eight. Uh -huh. and then it went to tens, and and I think it went. 13th and 14th in there for a while. Then the price of wheat went up and then everybody went to 23s. Price of fuel had a lot to do with that yeah, too. Fuel and the high price combine stuff. They equipment cost too much. And they know it. Mm -hmm. And the farmer's up against a bad time right now. Mm -hmm. you know. um, let's see. Kind of. Do you, do you guys hire employees, or is it mainly family? Employees. We have, um, we always have two with us. We like to have three. Okay. But sometimes that's kind of hard. And then do you usually, do you cook for the crew, or do you, are you out driving truck and stuff? No, I, I am out driving truck, okay. but um, I'll get lunch made, take it with me. They know it's in the pickup. When you get close to that pickup, you better go grab it, because I'm not delivering. <laughs> she didn't do much for four years. Yeah, for four she years. She surgery so. for, yeah. she couldn't do nothing. Couldn't drive. I had a shoulder injury she from another job. She didn't go along for two years, wasn't it? I didn't go for 14 or 15. Yeah. Yeah. And then at night when they come in, they try to send me in the first truck after the elevators close, and then I'll fix a full meal oh, wow. for everybody at that time. And they come in and grab it and head for the showers. And then it's all over again. Yep. <laughs> Can't wait till morning. <laughs> <laughs> um, let's see if we have any other questions for you. What's the biggest change that maybe you've seen over your harvest? Change? Here? Yeah. Oh, the big combine, the big truck. Now the highways are getting better. They used to be so narrow and dead. They used to haul them things with 14 foot headers on. You know, and the, there was only a ton and a half trucks back then, a ton and a half yep. Chevy trucks and the teeter tot, you know. That'd be careful if they could go 35. Maybe stop speed 45 going down a hill. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. <laughs> Back in the yeah, old days. Speed. I think the biggest change I see is started with U.S. Custom Harvesters. Um, we are original members, but before U.S. Custom Harvesters came along, everybody was your competition. And mm -hmm. today I feel like we are working together as comrades so much more than we were before U.S. Custom Harvesters became an organization to uh, be friends with people. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's something that I think is unique about. Loyalty. Mm -hmm. I like the way that today, if someone can't get to a job, they will call a friend and say, hey, do you have a little bit of time? I need you to do this for me this year. Uh -huh. And not feel threatened by giving your job that year to that friend. Mm -hmm. Another big change is uh, we're all getting old. They're getting less of us all the time. Yeah. I don't know how the new people can get in unless help, you know, a lot of help. Yeah, it's really a challenge out there for young people to try to make it work. You gotta get lucky. Uh huh. We had good years, and, I don't know, 11, 12, or 13 years. That's the good years there. Kind of picked up and really helped out. Uh huh. Yeah. What has helped you kind of get through maybe some of the tougher years? It's tough right now. Last year was really tough for. To sustain. 18. Yeah. You know, drought, hail, oh, it's terrible. Yeah, everybody is feeling it. Some people might got lucky, but one or two males got lucky. The son, Jay-Z, did all right. The rest of us suffered a little bit. We, we made it. Mm -hmm. I think the fact that what's got us ahead finally was the fact that trucking really came in around home and that people knew we were there and started hiring them in the winter time at doing a lot of trucking and all the trucking they do is do a lot of transfer. It's usually just local, so they're they're right there within fifty mile of home all the time. Mm -hmm. But that money really coming in and has helped us to stay on our feet and not mm -hmm. have to borrow that operating money in the spring anymore. Mm -hmm. That's yeah. a big challenge. Yeah. Try not op borrow so darn much money it's just so hard to pay back, you know. The operations of it. Yeah. yeah. That, when you go to the bank, they want that first. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Get your operating money. Yeah. 
So I think you mentioned when you guys joined the U.S. Harvester um, organization, um, but what have you gained by being a member? Oh. We've gained a lot of friendships. I do feel that a lot of different laws, like link laws and things like that, have mm -hmm. been changed to our favor um, through U.S. Harvesters and sending our officers down to Washington, D.C. But I, I think that's about the biggest thing. The we link law have. in Nebraska really helped out. It helped a lot. Um, Mr. Steve. Anyway, you got that boy. done. Uh huh. Chad? Been a good part, or been helpful being a part of the organization. Yeah, yeah. To yeah. You bet. <laughs> well, I think that's, that's kind of all I have, unless you guys have more that you would like to share. I just am proud of the fact that um, when we were asked for a $25 donation to possibly start an organization mm -hmm. like this, that we did go ahead and donate that and what it became today. Yeah, it's definitely grown and yeah. brought a lot of people it together. happened right down in Vernon, Texas. Yeah, we she was across, we were on, on my lap. <laughs> Yeah, I'll pet it. Eloise. Phyllis Weiss. Phyllis Weiss. Uh -huh. Yeah. It's yeah. a big thing. And yeah. We're lucky to keep it together in uh -huh. early years. You know? yeah. yeah. The early it years is. were a challenge for U.S. custom harvesters with money. And well, it was only $25. We didn't have much to operate on. Uh -huh. But know. one of the first conventions you ever went to, how many people were there, you would say? Oh, I couldn't tell you. Because I, I didn't go at first. I was home with the kids, and he would, and his yeah. two brothers would take off and go together. But I can remember him. Didn't going. make them all. No, but like maybe yeah, 35 yeah. people at some yeah. of the first ones. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Now to 10,000 probably it's going to be here this year. Right. Wow. It's a huge change. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Quite a change on that part. Yeah. Huge change. It's a wonderful organization. It really is. The scholarships and. Hall of Fame. Yeah, Hall of Fame. Hall of Fame. Recognizing people. Uh -huh. Very nice. I went and worked uh, Husker Harvest Days this year in Nebraska because JC was not home from Montana yet. Uh -huh. And I was really surprised at the people that came past the booth and I would say, do you know what a U.S. Custom Harvester does? And they're like, no. And I would tell them, you know, hey, we're a farm service and we come out on your farm and take the crop off and then we will um, take it to town in our trucks to where if you needed a grain bin or an elevator or what. And they're like, really? That exists? I'm surprised at mm -hmm. how many people did not know that we're here. Mm -hmm. And I really enjoyed, I was there on FFA day when all of the Nebraska FFA kids get to mm -hmm. come. And they were so interested in it. And a lot of those kids at that point were saying, well, how much money do you make a month? And how much uh, country do you get to go see and stuff? And how their interest was. I think U.S. Harvesters needs to kind of hit the FFA um, organization up at educating them about us. Yeah. And that there are jobs there you know, when they're out of high school to help support them through college. Mm -hmm. Good way to see the country. Yeah. yeah, good way to see the country. Learn school or skills that you don't get yeah. otherwise. Yeah. But Very interesting. Thank you guys for You're welcome. It, uh, sitting here with me today. Yeah. Thanks for all everything you guys have done for the industry and for the organization. I Thank know you. It's been really appreciated. It's been an honor to be in this organization. So.